Hello, and welcome to Weathersfield Proctor Library Storytime. I'm Glenna Coleman, Youth Services Librarian, and today we'll be reading a story about Easter. Now, our library bear has very kindly decorated the library for us, and I see that he's also looking very hard at my rabbit ears. So I'm going to share those with him to get him into the spirit. And Bear, you did such a great job decorating, but I'm gonna move our Easter egg tree over a little bit so that we can see the pictures from today's story really well. Well, I'm excited to have Easter. I know that everybody likes to hunt for Easter eggs. Bear's got his Easter basket here and he's got some eggs that he's found already. That's really awesome. Well, let's get started with today's story. Today's story is a very old story. It was published in 1939, and it's called The Country Bunny and the Little Gold Shoes, as told to Jennifer. This story is by DuBose Hayward, and the pictures are by Marjorie Hack. The reason we have only one story for this story time bear is that this is a pretty long story, but I think everybody will find it interesting. And I really have to say, I love the illustrations in this book. So this is the country bunny and the little gold shoes as told to Jennifer by DuBose Hayward, pictures by Marjorie Hack. And there's a picture of our country bunny. hear of the Easter Bunny who comes each Easter day before sunrise to bring eggs for boys and girls. So we think there is only one. But this is not so. There are really five Easter Bunnies, and they must be the five kindest and swiftest and wisest bunnies in the whole wide world. Because between sunset on Easter Eve and dawn on Easter morning, they do more work than most rabbits do in a whole year. Are there really five bunnies in this picture? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five. There are five. When one of the Easter bunnies grows old and can no longer run fast, the old, wise, and kind grandfather bunny who lives at the Palace of Easter Eggs calls the bunnies together from the whole world to select the very best one to take the place. Often, a mother bunny says to her child, now if you learn to be wise and kind and swift, someday you may grow up to be one of the Easter bunnies. And all of the babies try their very best so that they can grow up and go to work for the grandfather bunny at the Palace of Easter Eggs. One day, a little country girl bunny with a brown skin and a little cotton ball of a tail said, Someday I shall grow up to be an Easter bunny. You wait and see. Then all of the big white bunnies who lived in fine houses and all the jackrabbits with long legs who can run so fast, laughed at the little cottontail and told her to go back to the country and eat a carrot. But she said, wait and see. Mm, I like her spunk. The little girl cottontail grew up to be a young lady cottontail. And by and by, she had a husband. And then one day, much to her surprise, there were 21 cottontail babies to take care of. Oh my goodness. There are just too many for us to count, Bear. Then the big white rabbits and the jacks with long legs laughed and laughed and they said, What did we tell you? Only a country rabbit would go and have all those babies. Now take care of them and leave Easter eggs to great big men bunnies like us. And they went away liking themselves very much. Cottontail stopped thinking about hopping over the world with lovely eggs for little boys and girls, and she took care of her babies. 
And one day, when her children stopped being babies and were little girl and boy bunnies, she called them to her and said, now we are going to have some fun. Ooh, I wonder what kind of fun she's going to have with her babies. Then two of them, she gave little brooms and showed them how to sweep out the cottage. And two, she taught how to make beds. Two more went with her to the kitchen and in no time at all had found out how to cook a good dinner. And with these went the two little dishwashers and they made the glasses shine like crystal. Two had little wash tubs full of soap suds and they washed all the linen. Two did the sewing and mending. Well, let's see how many of that is so far. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Ooh, we're not to we're not to the full number of bunnies yet. Two who had sweet voices were taught to sing, and two more to dance, and these amused all the others while they worked, so that they were very happy. Two others were soon digging in the garden. To two, she gave paints and crayons so they could make pretty pictures for the walls. And when Mother Cottontail had given out all of the tasks, she looked around and there was only one little boy bunny left and he was sad and lonely. Now let's see, we had 12 on the other page. 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 21. That's all of them. But this little one is sad and lonely. Then Mother Cottontail said to him, You are the most polite of all my children, so I shall make you keeper of my chair. And whenever I come to dinner, you shall seat me politely at table. Then one day, when the little rabbits were half grown up, she heard a great talk among the wood rabbits. And when she asked what it was about, they said, haven't you heard? One of the five Easter bunnies has grown too slow, and we are all going to the Palace of Easter Eggs to see old grandfather pick out a new one to take his place. Wow. So she called her little cottontails, and they all set off to the palace to see the fun. But their mother was sad because she thought that now she was nothing but an old mother bunny and could only look on and that a big handsome white rabbit or long-legged jack would be chosen. When they came to the palace of Easter eggs, there were bunnies everywhere on the great lawn and the ones that hoped to be the Easter bunny stood together and all the other ones looked at them and clapped their paws. Then the big front door opened and the old, wise, and kind grandfather came hopping slowly out. And he told the biggest and those with the longest legs to show what they could do. They jumped and ran and showed him their pretty white fur, and they were all very fast and very clever. You know what, though? I'm remembering back, and I seem to recall that being fast was not the first requirement for a bunny. Let's keep reading and find out what happens. But still, he did not pick one. And he said to them, you are pretty and you are fast, but you have not shown me that you are either kind or wise. Then his kind old eyes looked everywhere. And at last they rested on little Cottontail Mother where she stood with her children around her. And he called her to come right up to the palace steps. So she took her 21 children and went up and stood before him. And when he spoke, his voice was so kind that she was not frightened at all. And he said, what a large family you have, my dear. I suppose they take all of your time. But she said, when they were babies, that was so, but now they are so well trained that they do most of the work for me. Ah, he said, smiling, you must be very wise to train so many children so well. But tell me, do they always look so happy? And do they always hold their ears up so prettily? Indeed they do, she answered. We never have a tear or a crossword in our little country cottage. 
and if I do say it myself, they do carry their ears better than most bunnies. Then, he said, patting the nearest bunny on the head, you must be very kind indeed to have such a happy home. It is too bad that you have no time to run and grow swift, as I might then have made you my fifth Easter bunny. At that, Mother Cottontail started to laugh. Then she whispered to the little bunnies, and every rabbit on the lawn looked to see what would happen, and the old grandfather leaned forward to watch. Suddenly, all of her 21 children raced away, and Cottontail dashed after them. And in no time at all, she had them all back again in front of the palace. Then the old, kind, wise grandfather bunny said, I see that you are swift also. It is too bad that you cannot go to carry my eggs because you will have to stay at home to take care of your children. Mother Cottontail nodded her head to the little ones and they all formed a line and bowed low to the grandfather. Then she stepped in front of them and she said, they will take better care of the house than I. Then she called them up two by two and as she put her hands on the heads of each pair, she said, these are my sweepers. They keep the cottage as clean as your hand. These make the beds without a wrinkle. These cook my dinner. These wash the dishes. These tend the garden. These wash and dry all the clothes. These do the mending. These sing and these dance to keep us merry while we work. These are learning to paint pretty pictures for our walls. And this littlest one of all always pulls out my chair for me when I sit to table. So you see, I can leave them to take care of the house until I come home. Then the old, kind, wise grandfather said, you have proved yourself to be not only wise and kind and swift, but also very clever. Come to the palace tomorrow afternoon, for that is Easter Eve, and you shall be my fifth Easter bunny. The next evening, Cottontail knocked on the big front door and was admitted to the palace. There she stood in her funny country clothes, but none of the other four Easter bunnies laughed, for they were wise and kind and knew better. They showed her all over the palace, from room to room, all piled high with eggs of gold and silver and eggs that glittered like snow chocolate eggs, marshmallow eggs, eggs for rich children and eggs for poor children, for children who were sick and children who were well, all over the world. Let's see if we can see some of those special eggs in the middle there. Look at all of those Easter eggs. No wonder they need five Easter bunnies. Then, as soon as it was dark enough for the children to be asleep all over the world, the old, wise, kind grandfather gave the word, and the five bunnies set to work as fast as they could. First one, then another, would take up a large egg or a pretty little basket, and in a single hop would be out of the palace and away out of sight. Then, in a moment, he would be back again, and before you could say Jack Robinson, he would have whisked away again. Slowly the night wore away, and the bunnies began to look tired as they kept returning for more and more eggs. And in the palace, the glittering piles grew smaller and smaller. Poor little Cottontail was very tired, for this was the first time she had ever gone so far or so fast in her life. And she was beginning to hope that she could soon take the little basket that was set aside for her own children and go hopping home when old, wise, kind grandfather called her to him. When she went close, she saw that he was holding in his hand the loveliest egg she had ever seen. It glittered like a diamond. Peek through and see what you shall see, he said. So she peeked through the little hole in one end, and she saw a beautiful scene with a sleigh and a lake with people skating on the ice. And she, he said, because you have such a loving heart for children, I am going to give you the 
best, but the hardest trip of all. Far off, over two rivers and three mountains, there is a great mountain peak. And in a little cottage on that peak is a little boy who has been ill for a whole year and who has been so brave that never once has he cried or complained. The mountain is so high that there is ice on the top and it will be hard to climb. But if you get there, you'll give more happiness than any other Easter bunny. Cottontail picked up the egg very gently and went hopping away on her journey. She crossed the first river and then the second. She went over the first mountain and then another mountain and yet another until at last she reached the highest mountain of all. My goodness, it's still winter up in the mountains, even though it's spring down in the valley. She was very tired when she got to the bottom of the great peak and her heart failed her when she saw how high it was and how slippery with ice and snow on top. But holding the egg very carefully, she started hopping up. At last she reached the ice and snow and now she was almost to the top and she could see the little cottage all covered with snow where the little boy was sleeping. Then a terrible thing happened. Ooh, let's take a minute there and see if we can predict what that terrible thing is going to be. Are you ready? Okay. Her foot slipped and down she came. Downward she flew into snowdrifts. Then she left the ice and snow and rolling and bouncing against the stones, she felt the air getting warmer. Oh my goodness, that's not at all what I thought would happen. I thought maybe the egg would break, but that's not it at all. Down, down she went and she crashed through a thicket of budding laurel, rolled across a pasture and finally struck against the trunk of a great apple tree that was just getting ready to bloom for Easter. And there she lay with the egg still safely clutched in her paw with a great pain in her leg. She tried to rise again because she saw a lovely pink light in the sky and she knew that in a few minutes more it would be day and the little boy would be sad if she did not get his egg to him. But the pain was so bad she fell down. Then she felt something touch her shoulder and she looked up and there, right before her, way off there in that distant land was old, wise, kind Grandfather Bunny. And he smiled at her and he said, you are not only wise and kind and swift, but you are also the bravest of all the bunnies. And I shall make you my very own gold shoe Easter Bunny. And he reached over and she saw for the first time that he was holding a tiny pair of gold shoes in his hand. And he bent down and put them on her feet. Suddenly all the pain left her leg and she stood up and picked up the precious egg. Then before she knew what was happening, she felt a sudden motion and she found herself flying high in the air. Over the pasture she flew, over the laurel, the stones, until at last, when she landed, she looked back and she saw that one single jump had carried her halfway up the mountain. Then she jumped once again, and there she was at the cottage door. Quickly, she squeezed through the tiny crack that had been left open, just in case the bunny did come all that way. And in the hand of the beautiful sleeping boy, she placed the egg. Then, just as the Easter morning sun rose over the edge of the world, she jumped quickly back to the palace where she found her little basket for her own little bunnies and went hopping back home to give them a happy Easter. Mother Cottontail found that the garden was tended. And sure enough, just as she had said, everything was in order. The floors were swept and there were two lovely new pictures painted and hanging on the wall. The dishes were washed and shown in the cupboard. The clothes were washed 
and mended and nicely hung away. And her 21 children were all sound asleep in their little beds. And the little house of Mother Cottontail can always be told now from the homes of all other bunnies because in a special place on the wall, on a very special hook, hangs a pair of very tiny little gold shoes. That's the end of The Country Bunny and the Little Gold Shoes by DuBose Hayward, pictures by Marjorie Hack. Well, Bear, thank you so much for decorating the library for us. We're looking forward to seeing all of our friends back here at the library at some point, but we're really glad that you can read with us in the meantime. So goodbye from the Weathersfield Proctor Library Storytime, and we'll see you again.